Yeah. Yes. And it's going down like that right now. We are here, baby. 11 o'clock in the morning. Get the stretch up. I'm morning yawning. Carol Chamberlain is probably my favorita. Mi favorita, how you doing, mama? Good to see you. No drama, no doubt. Uh. So it's going down, though. The Daily Go Get a Visit Show. And we all up in your area. <laughs> and we got something good to talk about this morning. You know, we're going to get a little interesting this morning. We're going to talk about, uh, you know what I'm saying, when we start losing things. And we're not talking about the things that we hold dear. But then, in a way, we kind of are, you know what I'm saying? Today on the Daily Go Get a Visit Show, we're talking about you got good sense, but you're losing your good senses. So, you know, you start talking about your senses. You're talking about your taste, your touch, your sight, your smell, your hearing, you know. But we can take it a little bit farther than that. Because when, uh, whenever you were able to naturally do something that, that um, you're not as able to do or on the same level as you did before, it starts to get to you. And in your world, that's going to feel like you're losing some of your senses and it can make you. I said, hold on, let me start it over. I mean, it can start to feel like you're losing some of your senses and it can make it real tense when you realize that you're getting a little slower. And you can show a person that you used to be able to be that you can compete. And you know how it goes when we're really trying to eat. Uh, Yo, it's the daily, daily, the daily, the daily, the daily. Daily, the daily go get a missile show, and it's gonna be all right this morning. You gonna think so? I know so. It's gonna be all right. Everything is gonna be all right, baby. So, it's the daily go get a missile show. You got good sense, but you're losing some of your good senses. Oh man, yeah. You know, I'm I'm gonna do something I haven't done in a while here. I'm going to wear my glasses the whole, this whole show. Y'all know I haven't done that in a while. And um, I haven't done it in a while for good reason. But for this morning, for this show, I think it's necessary. So let's get it. Piz, piz, piz knopping. Emily Dunlap in the house of city. Emily, let's get it going, y'all. Urban therapy with Sun Sun Seven Five Two with this your daily daily the daily the daily the daily the daily the daily go get a mism show we do this every single day every single day every day every day it rains every day it rains and the DG will do the same I'm your host Sun Seven Five Two AKA Omar with the and if you can't say Omar with the well, then you just say Omar with the R. It's the daily. Go get a minute. So all up in your area. And I hope that y'all feeling like real men and real women should surely show the world's most precious and greatest pearl in the world. Surely show the world's most precious and greatest pearl in the world. How you feeling? Mine's good to see me some. You put my eyes on you. My eye hole. I got you my eye hole. What's up? So this morning on the Daily Go Get Emism Show, we are talking about when you got good sense, but you're losing some of your good senses, your sense of hearing, your sense of sight, your sense of taste, your sense of touch, your sense of being able to do the stuff that you used to be able to do. Y'all know, as well as I know, each and every one of us has a particular gift that we're good at. And it seems like it's a natural gift. Even if we have practiced and we've honed it, the ability to be able to practice and get better at it and hone it is ours naturally god given universe universe uh um doled out and you know when we're younger we may take those those abilities those senses for granted take it for granted that's what we do but when you realize that some of those things are unable for you to be taken for granted and it can actually it can actually start to affect you really really adversely later on you know what i'm saying like it's it's okay let, let's start off let's start off with eyesight because this is something that i can definitely relate to and a lot of people that are watching the show could probably relate to that you know when your eyes start going bad when your eyes first start 
if you're a person who hasn't worn glasses all your life, you probably don't want to be a person that's going to have to wear glasses for the rest of your life. Some people don't like to wear glasses because they don't like the way they look with the glasses on. Some people don't like to wear glasses because, uh, you know, they don't want to they don't want to face the reality that they can't see as well as they used to see. Uh, I think with me, first of all, I didn't like to wear glasses. When I was younger, I used to wear shades every now and then, sunglasses and shit like that. But I didn't really like to wear them for a long time. It was a pain in the ass. I never really liked the way they felt on my face, even if I had a nice pair, comfortable pair, whatever. And I really don't like to hide my eyes, to be honest with you. I don't like to hide my eyes. I like for people to see what I'm talking about. And I like to see other people's eyes when I'm talking to them, too. And even though if it's a clear pair of glasses, you can still see. But my eyes started alerting me to the fact that there was a problem at the beginning, in the beginning of 2017. And I'm thinking that it was probably really at the end of 2016. And, and what, what uh, put me on to it was when I, would, when I would be at work, certain things that were far away started to look blurry. But I, I was thinking that it was only in one eye. It seemed like my right eye was good, but my left eye was a little was was suffering a little bit. And but I wasn't. It had never occurred to me that I needed glasses. I thought, I I really thought that maybe I was having some kind of allergic reaction. I thought that something was going on outside of the fact that yeah, maybe my eyes were starting to fail me. So I'm telling people about it, like yo, you know, like sometimes when I'm when I'm at work. And I only noticed it when I was at work. When I'm at work, I, um, like things seem a little blurry, like signs and things like that. Still never occurred to me that, you know, maybe you should go get your eyes checked. Then somebody put me on and it was like, yo, have you, when, when was the last time you had an eye exam? I was like, ding, eye exam? What you talking about? Anything wrong with my eyes? At least not the right one. I thought I had 20 20 vision. Well, anyway, so I went to the eye doctor to get an eye exam. Turns out, like, oh, yo, you need, you need, uh, you need glasses. Yeah, you need glasses. I was like, need glasses. My first question was, well, how long am I going to need these glasses? I don't want to wear these for the rest of my life. And you know, me being on the holistic side of things, like. Uh, isn't there another way to correct your vision? Well, there are techniques that you can employ to strengthen your eyes back to to a, a better level than they may have descended to. But you're probably not going to ever see as well as you did before. So it really woke me up to the fact that, yo, I really took my eyesight for granted for years. And it's not something I can do now. I knew that once I started getting glasses that I would have to keep upgrading the the prescription because they say that the glasses correct your eyesight but that's not really what they mean what they mean is it a lot it allows you to be able to see as far as where you are right then and there so whatever you, whatever your problem is if you have astigmatism or if you have if if you are nearsighted or farsighted or whatever it will help that but it was it does not correct your vision as far as giving you a game plan for later on to be able to stop using the glasses. And that's what I wanted. I'm like, well, what can we do to help me not need the glasses anymore? That was my goal. And it was like, well, you know, Mr. McIntyre, we ain't in the business of taking away our own business. So if there is a way out there that you can see better, you're going to get it here. Better go to the internet. Ask one of those naturopathic doctors that you be uh so um that you have so much confidence in. And 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 my eyes are getting progressively worse. And people have told me it was because it's these cell phones. These cell phones are ruining people's eyes or whatever. <clears throat> I'm like, damn. So by the time, by the time I I'm become a senior citizen, I'm gonna be totally blind, huh? And it is a concern of mine. Like I can still see and read up to certain distances, but it's nothing like it was before. 
So when I put the glasses on, I'm, I'm seeing things in high def. Before you realize that you need glasses, you don't even realize that you're, you're seeing things that are a little blurry. It's sort of like when you adjust sharpness, the sharpness when you when you uh, adjust the TV screen. Sharp, the sharpness brings things, you know, makes the lines uh, um, more defined and straighter. So, yeah. So eyesight is one of those things that we may take for granted until we lose them. Who knew? Who knew? What's going on, Annette Davis, the number one? Uh, Annette Davis, the number one. What's going on? Uh, it's good to see me some, you. Thanks for coming on through Saturday, crew. You know how we do. Sh -sh 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 Charlene Curry. A ch -ch 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 Charlene Curry. Uh, uh. Quick, fast, in a hurry. It's the sh -sh 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 -ch Charlene Curry. Uh, uh. Quick, fast, in a hurry. It's the ch -ch 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 Charlene Curry. What's going on, Sha Charlene? How you feeling, Sha Charlene? It's good to see me some you, my, and you know that it's a fact. So we're going to go over a lot of things. We're not going to get just start. I'm, I'm, we're not going to get stuck on or hung up on just vision and hearing and and um and and stuff like that. We, I, I want to talk about anything and everything that you used to be able to do or that you used to take grant take for granted physically. And um, and 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 contrast them to where you are with them now. So we want to track the decline, but we're not doing it so we can boohoo about it, a bitch about it. But I think it's it's uh, important that we take a look at it, and maybe we can find out why some of them happen and what we can do in the future in order to fix them. So that's what we're talking about on the Daily Go Get Amism show. You got good sense, but you're losing some of your good senses. Now, what the reason that I, that I said that you got good sense, luckily, you know, I don't feel like I am and I don't know anybody else that seems to be losing their good sense. Like, you know, dementia or, you know, like everybody that I know cur currently, knock on wood, it's straight mentally, emotionally, eh, but it's not, we not, I'm not dealing with people who are talking to themselves and really, really thinking that somebody is there. I'm not dealing with people who are acting crazy or, or doped out, drugged out and all of that kind of stuff. So that's a good thing. So because long-term, long-term drug use can actually uh, cause you to start losing your mind. And we don't want to go there. We ain't trying to see that. We don't want to. No, no, no. No, no, Carol Chamberlain. Me favorita says, I've been wearing them since fifth grade. Sick in my head. So you've been wearing glasses since you were in the fifth grade. Now, what happened in first, second, third, and fourth grade? Did Were you seeing well or did you not think? Did you think that something was well? Did you really think that that everything was okay? And then you realize like that, the chalk, the chalkboard, I don't, you know, I don't be seeing certain things on the chalkboard when, you know, when the teacher go up to the chalkboard, you know, I, I don't be seeing them math problems or whatever, you know, reading spelling words, I, you know, like when you come to the realization that there's a problem, it's, it's an eye opening experience, no pun intended, but it is an eye open. A eye open experience. You open your eye hole, son. Okay. So, um, so let me see. Let me see if y'all say anything. <clears throat> sure, husband says, I feel exactly the same way. I noticed I needed glasses when I was eating. I mean, when I when I was eating TV. Maybe you mean eating while watching TV. Because I know you ain't never ate no TV. I know that's for a fact. What, they got some kind of candy called TV? All right, anyway. Um, watching TV. But I had to move closer to read the captions. Oh, shit. I was wondering how long it takes it, it takes um, glasses to correct my vision. Yeah. It corrects them as soon as you put them on. And it messes them up as soon as you take them back off. You know what I'm saying? This is our plight. 
This is where we gonna be for a minute. This is where we gonna be for a minute. Yeah. Now, see, when I was at home, I didn't think anything was wrong with my vision at all because the TV is closer. When I was at work, we had long hallways. So I used to be able to read stuff really far away. And I could still read it, but it was looking blurry. And I'm 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 there giving my own myself my own eye test for not coming up with yo, something wrong with your eyes. So I'm like, oh yeah, it looked blurry in this eye. But this eye is cool. And look, and you know what? This eye is still better. Like, now this eye is so bad, I have to get up on, on, on the screen to, to read it. Like, from right here, it's blurry. And that's, that's what it was. It was blurry. It wasn't, like, illegible. It was just blurry. But, um, but, um, like I'm, I'm trying to wear these the whole show. All right. Oh yeah, and when I'm driving, like I don't even go, I don't even go outside, and, and 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 at night, like I can't. My night vision is all fucked up. My night vision is messed up. Like you know, like uh, I really need glasses at night, or it's going to be hard to read street signs and even license plates and things like that. So that's where we are. But yeah, I didn't think that anything was wrong when I was at home. There was no evidence that there was a problem. But then when I got the glasses and I, w I was watching TV, I was like, damn, I thought the TV was older, like an older uh, flat screen. So I'm thinking like, you know, it was wearing out. It's time to get a new joint. I'm like, no. I'm like, oh, the picture is, is just as clear as it has ever been. But my eyes weren't as good. So. <sighs> and even when I went to the eye doctor, I was like, no, my right eye is good. He was like, yeah, it's all that. It was not all that, son. My right eye was not all that. Not at all. Make sure that y'all hit the like button. Hit the like button. You know what I mean? Let everybody know what you're liking today. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel. And share the show. I know that you did it already, yo. But share the show. I know you did it already, yo. But um, yeah, like the show, share the show, subscribe to the channel. Um, Carol Chamberlain says, in the earlier years, I didn't have a problem seeing, but my teachers noticed that if they move my seat closer to the to the room, to the front of the room. Oh, really? So they they put you on. When you might have an eye problem. They had to tell you you had an eye problem. And you wasn't even staring. Um, Charlene Curry says, my eyes started getting bad after staring at the computer all day at work. They say that that's, that really hurts your eyes. And you know what, the, you know what the, thing, the thing is about it for me? Sh Sh Charlene, to Charlie, is that I'm like, well, how come? I remember when I was when, when we didn't have computers and all of that, and people said that people's eyes was getting bad from being sitting too close to the TV. Remember, they said that shit back in the day. You know, you sitting too close to the TV is messing up your eyes. I'm like, I, I, I don't get it. Like, can somebody tell me? Okay, let, you know what? Let's let's look it up. Let's look it up. Fuck it. Now, amazingly, you know, um, I, I've never looked this up before. Look, we still on this page about the the, the pigs, these smart ass pigs from last night. Did any of y'all look up pigs? <laughs> oink oink, the oink oink oink. Are computers and cell phones ruining our eyesight? And if so, how? The hell? Okay, okay. Okay, let's see here. Oh, you know what, what's going on? I had it on images. Like, I'm like, well, where's the shit? Where's the shit? Okay. Too much screen time can wreck your eyes. Smartphones, laptops, and other handheld devices all transmit light. 
However, the blue light in particular may be toxic for your eyes. We're doomed, yo. We are fucking doomed. Okay. Something about this blue light. Okay, smartphones, laptops, and other handheld devices all transmit light. Guys, scientists at the University of Toledo have discovered how blue light emitted from your technology has the potential to lead to macular degeneration, one of the leading causes of vision loss in the United States. It's no secret that the blue light harms our vision by damaging, damaging the eye's retina, said Ajith. Anyway, macular degeneration is the result of photoreceptor cell death in the retina. The function of the photoreceptor photoceptor um, cells is to capture visual images and signal them to 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 the brain using a, mo a molecule called retinal. Retinal, which is produced by the eye, is triggered by the blue light and causes various chemical reactions. the The reactions within the eye can be poisonous to the photoreceptor cell molecules, rendering them damaged. Okay, um, this is what I'm going to do. I'll, um, I will, I will copy that and put it in the comments. Y'all can check that out for yourselves later. Okay, Carol Chamberlain says, Omar, night driving is hard for me. The headlights of cars coming toward, toward me bother me. Damn. Monica Davis, Queen Monica is all up in the house. What up, Queen Monica? Queen Matu Mayini, she says, at least your third eye is clear. Woo! Woo! Got good sense, but losing your good senses. T. Carry Wright is all up in the house today, tonight, and all through the day. Hey, hey. Good to see me some. You, every time you come through, I'll be like, yeah. Okay, the blue light from electronic devices are said to be hard on the eyes. Carol Chambers said, okay. All right. Yeah, you sure did, Carol. You did say it before I, I looked it up. What a smarty pant. Okay. Annette Davis says, I used to be an athlete. I played football, basketball, softball, ran track. I could dance the night away. And I could dance the night away. Now with arthritis, playing sports are difficult. And as far as dancing, one song is all I got. And I'm glad that you 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 pushed it to that, to that. Because I really wanted to talk about that. Well, like I said. We're not going to relegate this conversation to just your, your five senses. You know what I mean? Like when you when you can't do something that you used to be able to do, it's a little depressing. It's a little demoralizing. It's not a fun thing. It's, it's not a, a fun situation to be in. You don't want to be a part of that. You know, we all talk about the things that we used to be able to do or whatever. And it's hard. We like, like Annette saying, when you were an athlete, you running, jumping, you know, that all that athletic ability is what people used to admire about you. And it probably had your body looking a certain type of way. And you got used to it looking that way. Sexy, 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 sexy. And when you can't do those things anymore, of course, your body responds in a certain type of way. So you may be gaining weight when you used to be able to keep used to maybe you used to be able to eat anything that you wanted to eat. And now if you look at a jelly bean, you're going to gain like five pounds. Today, today, one jelly bean. Yeah, you want to talk about magic beans? Yeah, and and that's that's tough to deal with. I'm dealing with it now. Shoot, just four or five years ago, you know what I mean? I feel like I was a powerhouse. I'm like you, big you, big tub of lard. And you may not feel like feel like um working like you used to be like you, you used to want to work out all the time exercise all the time now you're like you know i got other shit i gotta do 
where before you used to prioritize that. And now that you're not prioritizing it, it's, it's having an impact. It's showing yourself. It's revealing. Your laziness is showing. And I, I'm not saying that you're lazy, lazy, but you can see the difference in your attitude and, and you know, physically, mentally, emotionally. Things are different. And you miss the old days. Like, yo, I used to be able to eat hoagies, cheese, steaks, pizza, anything I wanted to. Snacks, cakes, cookies. Wouldn't gain a pound. Now I can't sniff sugar. Now I can't sniff fat. And Annette is talking about arthritis. That shit is real. You know what I mean? I think I'm getting it. Like, this hand be doing funny shit. Like, it be locking up. I'm like, what you doing? It's just locking up shit. I'm like, I eat colon ring. But just like any other thing in this world, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Use it or lose it. So we have to perform routine, routine maintenance on ourselves on a regular basis. You can't go weeks and months and years without doing something and think that you're going to come back and be able to do it at that same level. But we be trying to do it. You know, you used to play basketball. You ever see somebody that used to be able to run ball? And they go out there on that court after they, after they haven't ran ball in years and they fucking around. It, 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 it'd be an emergency room visit just waiting for them. Just waiting for them. Because they can't handle the rock. And all that, you know, basketball, that running and stopping and starting, trying to defend, trying to trying to dribble and, 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 and perform offense. is way more than just shooting. Uh, basketball is very physical. The next day, your knees is all messed up. You might have broke your ankles or had your ankles broken for you trying to defend somebody that was indefensible for you. Like I said, your shoulder messed up. Your arms are hurting. Your back is fucked up. You, may, you might be ace bandaging it today on some real shit. Ace bandaging it. So, so yeah, I mean, but that's that's pretty much where we are with things. So, I mean, it, it, like like Annette was saying, if you used to like the dance, just like the dance, and you can't get on the dance floor like, you know, Rob Bass and Easy Rock, it takes two, come on. You used to like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm dancing to this shit. You're like, all right, I'm going to dance to this shit. But I hope they don't play nothing good after that. Because right after this, I, yeah, all I have is a slow drag. <laughs> I got a slow drag in, uh, 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 in me. That's it. You know, Annette David says, you're right. I have become lazy, especially nowadays with COVID. I got depressed and no motivation to get back to a routine. Yeah. You know, we, we, we're not really encouraged to go out. Some it's not the same. It's just not the same. So you may not be as active as you used to be, and it may be showing. Not just by the way you look, because everybody else is going to tell you, oh, you must, you still look great. You look great, and you do. But you know on the inside that you're not doing what you used to do and what you know that you can do, and it's having an impact on your attitude. You feel in some kind of way like, yo, it almost feels feels like you're cheating on yourself. You know you're not treating your body the way that you used to tr treat it. And your body seems to be responding in kind. Like, all right, you don't fuck with me. I don't fuck with you. Try to run for a bus. See what happens. Uh, oh, oh, and here go the ill shit. You not even doing no strenuous activity. You just doing some kind of everyday motion. And you fuck around to get a Charlie horse. And nothing reminds you. That you haven't been working out or you haven't been exercising or taking good care of yourself like a Charlie horse. And that shit hurts. And you can't just wish it away or whatever. It feels like something is inside of your muscles. Just, you know, crawling. Like a wave. Charlie. Charlie. Show Hudson says, cracking the hell up. When I can't play ball, I'm going to die. Well, not die, but I love it. And, and I know it's coming, but dang, wait. Let's talk about y'all hair for a minute, ladies. 
and men. You know, some of y'all used to have a real pretty mane. You know what I'm saying? Used to have a real pretty mane. And some of y'all still do. But you know, when your hair was young and it was strong and you was taking care of it. You know, some people really took care of their hair. Don't mean, don't mean that it that it took care of you later on. That hair starts to thin. And it, and it ain't just because people are wearing um, um tight braids or or weaves or wigs or whatever. Hair wears out. And it's also indicative, like baldness or hair um, thinning, is indicative of actual actually uh, a heart condition. So all of these bald men you see out here may have something going on with the ticker. And that was always my biggest issue. Like, yo, when I started, you know, losing my hair, I was like, so what you saying? Because I was always good in health class. So I knew what that baldness was about. I'm like, bad enough. Heart disease runs in my family rampant. So I was concerned about it. I was concerned about it. But yeah, you know, when you comb in your hair, you see that shit falling into the sink. It might be, it might not be coming out in clumps, but it's enough for you to start seeing like, yo, I'm shedding. Some men can't 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 deal with it. Donald Trump can't deal with it. He said, "Fuck that. I'm going to find another way. I'm gonna comb over this shit. Get get um hair added in, whatever." Steve Harvey, he couldn't deal with it for for a long time. And and I and I honestly believe that had he not got exposed for having that man man wig weave whatever. I think he would have still stayed, stayed, um, you know, getting that shit. Because we knew something wasn't right with it from the like, what? Ain't nobody hair perfect like that. And who wears their hair like that? Nobody's hair is that perfect all the time. But it's a serious thing. And and honestly, you may have liked the way that you look when your hair was was full and it was strong and it was thick. You may have liked it. You liked yourself. You know, you were able to wear different styles and, you know, I mean, create different looks for yourself or whatever and be creative. When you lose your hair, you you ain't going to be all that creative. You're going to be bald creative, especially as a man. You know, I've, I've had almost every haircut that, that came out when I had hair. When it starts getting thin, you got to shave it down unless you just want to rock that bald spot. And I, I don't know you want to do that. You know what I mean, I don't know if you want to do that. My brother from another mother, Norris Hill. I said, my brother from another mother, Norris Hill. What's going on, my brother? Thanks for coming on out. It's always good to see you, no doubt. <laughs> no mustard with that, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. Um, Carol Chamberlain says, my hair started thinning about 10 years ago. It still grows, but it's thin. And I used to have very thick hair. Funny thing is, some of us didn't even know what, what thin or thick hair even meant. I didn't, I never figured out that what that term meant and still, until, you know, it started getting thin in here. I'm like, that's what they mean by thin hair? I was like, I don't know how you know. Did you measure every um um follicle? Follicle? Did you measure every follicle? I ain't know what they meant by thin hair, thick hair. And as David says, I'm very sensitive about my hair now that I'm losing my hair. People always joking women's hair, joking about women's hair or lack of hair. I'm very insecure when it comes to my hair. That's why I hide it, man. One day, one day you'll realize, you know, that you can only work with what you got. You can't work with what you don't have no more. But everybody has their time, Annette. Everybody has their time. So you do what you got to do during the time that you are spending, you know. One day, you may just see, like, I don't want to fuck it. You know what? 
I'm still here. I'm still all right. I'm still sexy. I'm still, I'm still, I still have all of the other gifts that God gave, um, gave me. And you still have that gift too. You just have to readjust it. Just like your eyesight. You know what I mean? You may not have that 2020, like, like Ayana, my, my daughter's um, eyesight is like, she can see shit that ain't even there. I'm like, what the fuck? You see things like animals see. You know how you, you have a dog or a cat and you see them looking at shit and you thinking like, what is it, a fly in here? And I'm like, ain't nothing. They see in spirits. Ayana can see spirits. I'm like, you can read that? She reading through walls and shit. I don't know if my eyesight was ever that good. But she young. She young. That's how I be. No, so it says chemo sucks. Chemo sucks when when it comes to losing hair for a while. I met my brother, my brother Steve, when he passed. Was the last time I saw him was in 2016. And he was teasing me about my hair. He was bald too, but it was because of chemo. He was like, Yeah, but but my hair is gonna grow back. My hair is gonna grow back. I ain't. I'm. I'm only bald because of the chemo. He'd be like you, you oh, you bald because you bald. I was like, yeah, but I've had some time to get used to it. And you know, it's a good thing. I ain't. You know, I wasn't the asshole that I really am because I could have been like, yeah, my hair ain't ain't gone because I'm sick. I'm alive and well. Steve was de was dead a year later. So needless to say, I did not regret my decision not to tease him. I, there was no way I was going to do that. But I was like, you sure are throwing, you sure are throwing um stones in a glass house. You living straight in a glass house. I miss the fuck out of my man. I miss him. I miss him all the time. You know what I'm saying? That, that was my dude. You know, look. You know. But yeah, when you when you have an illness and you lose you lose your faculties, you lose some of your senses, you lose some of your abilities. It's a whole different story because that's a whole different level. You know, a lot of times our vanity keeps us keeps us uh, feeling some kind of way about not looking this way or or appearing this way or that way to other people. That's our vanity. It, ain't, it really ain't nothing. I don't like to wear glasses. It's not that I don't like the way I look with glasses, but I definitely love the way I look without them. And I don't like to wear them. I don't like being dependent, but that's vanity too. It's vanity. There's no, there's no real way around it. Once you come to the, once you come to the, 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 the realization that is really all in your head, that is really you just wanting to stay cute. That's that's holding you back. You start freeing yourself, and and like I said, it comes at different times for different people. But once you get there, you you actually gain strength that that other people knew that you had, but they also knew that you were not using, and they will try to capitalize on that shit. <laughs> you know, so. You know, um, when you still have, when you still have the 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 rest of the gifts that uh, that you had, especially your mental state, or should I say, your mental capacity, you still smart as shit. You're still able to figure out things. You're still able to make a way. You know, you're still able to think your way out of out of situations instead of having to punch your way out of situations. Or cry your way out of situations. It's a good thing. Make sure that y'all hit that like button. Hit the 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 hit that like button. Hit that like button. Hit the like button. You know what time it is and share the show, y'all. Just share the show. Yeah, show show y'all. Yeah, act like you know and subscribe to that channel. Be down with the crew every day. Me and you. Oh. Um. 
Sure, I say, put those glasses back on. The show ain't over. All right, I got you. I got you. I'm taking orders. I'm taking orders. But yeah, I mean, on some real shit, that's why we're talking about, and that's why we titled the show Got Good Sense, But Losing Your Good Senses. There's a lot of vanity wrapped up in, in the, a lot of the ways that we feel about ourselves. We, we know that good looking people seem to have an easier time in life. Is it true? No. But does it look like 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 that to us? Yes. And we ain't trying to be part of the ugly crew. Vanity all day. All day. But let's keep it moving though. The hair thing, I know is a big deal for women. It's a big deal. It is. It's a big deal. You know. And I guess I ain't helping, you know. I'm I'm quick to poke, poke fun like, look, man. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I don't even, the weave thing. Look, I I can deal with the weave thing. I don't like it, but I can deal with it. That eyelash thing, though, yo, 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 your eyes don't need no weave. You take that eye weave out. Get them eye on anxiety there, shorty. Get them eye on anxiety there, shorty. We're not doing this. We're not doing that. It's gonna be y'all right. Everything is going to be y'all right. Thank you. Won't uh y'all can call into the show, man. If y'all want to call into the show, you know, putting your three your, your two cents about a sense or an ability that you feel like is is slipping away from you. I invite you to call in. You know, the show is totally uncensored. Express your passion in any form or fashion. If you want to curse, cuss, swear, do it right here. And I might even say, yeah, if you want to yell, scream, holler, you could do that shit. It never cost you a dollar. Uh. And the, and the, and the, and the number to call is like 319 That's the number to call. I said a 319 Yes, 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 y'all. I said a 319 yeah, get on the line. I said a 319-527-6199. Yeah, get your shine, baby. Uh. 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 Get your shine, baby. 319-527-6199, baby. It's the Daily Go Get a Business Show all up in your area. We are in motion, and it's going to be y'all right. Yeah, you know it's going to be y'all right. Thank you. Well, uh. And we're talking about got good sense, but losing your good senses. Got good sense, but losing your good senses. I mean, it, this thing could be a lot worse. It could be a lot worse. Some of y'all can cook. Some of y'all can really, really cook. Now, what if, we, what if you lost your ability to be able to do that? What if you lost your ability to be able to cook? Like, yo, I love, I mean, everybody be talking about how good my dishes are, my meals are, and all that kind of shit. There aren't too many physical ailments or, or deteriorate, deterioration that can, that can take that away from you. And I'm just saying that so we can stay a little bit on the positive side. We talking about the things that we've, we've lost on a personal side. But all is not lost, no matter what. All is not lost. We still here, baby. We still here. And we ain't going nowhere. Not in that way, we ain't. It's going to be y'all right. Yeah, you know it's going to be y'all right. Thank you. Won't. Uh. So, like, yeah. some A lot of y'all can uh, uh, cook. But I tell you, this one sometimes suffers. Your ability to be able to sing. It may there may have been a time in your life where you could really blow out them notes. <sighs> and you may not be as, as hot, as sharp as you used to be. You may have been able to, you know, I don't know, crack a glass. I never understood why that was important. Why would I need to break a glass with my voice? And most people who can break a glass with their voice, that don't translate into good songs 
or sometimes not even really. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, that to me, that can that can end your career or have or have a really serious impact on your career. Like, you know how well Whitney Houston used to be. She was like the the ultimate alto. She was the ultimate alto. Used to kill it, right? But you know, at the end of her career, I mean, well, should I say at the near the end of her life, she was trying to get her voice back. Because around the late 90s, they said that her cigarette smoking and, and whatever, you know, was starting to affect her voice. And she couldn't sing as well as she used to be able to sing. Can you imagine how she had to feel about that shit? Like, fuck. Mariah still got it. And I ain't got fucked that. So she was fighting her way back. But some of y'all may be, you know, the type to go ahead and grab the mic and get stupid on a karaoke. Speaking of grabbing the mic and getting stupid on a karaoke, Barbara Hill Cisse just came in. Now, I don't know if y'all know, but she can sing a fucking ass off. Acapella, whatever. You know, she, she know how to do that shit. But one thing I know about her personally is she was always worried about not being able to do it no more. And, you know, like, we, we take people who can sing for granted, but we, we, we are amazed at this shit, too. You know, because if you are a halfway singer or, you know, you can sing, but you ain't a singer, you know, you might have to get your voice together before you decide to sing. It could be stage fright behind it, you know, uh, fear or contempt for all that attention. But you see other people, they just, they'd be like, oh, time to sing. And they just start blowing. You'd be like, damn, I, don't, I can't, I couldn't sing like that at that level or, you know, at that pitch or that tone. Like, you know you can sing when you don't have to yell when you sing. You don't have to sing loud. When you can sing low, hey, you know you got it. Because they not talk singing, they singing, singing. They just got the voice. Not everybody has it. And if you start to lose it, you feel some kind of way. You, you hear people t say it all the time. Like, I used to really be able to sing. I, I don't know what happened. Oh. She said, uh, Barbara Hill CC says, couldn't communicate till I got to the appy. What's up? And Norris Hill says, my falsetto is gone. No more L DeBarge for me. All this love is waiting for you, my darling. My oh no, is my baby my darling? Okay, baby, oh, baby, oh. They whole family is falsetto. It must not. None of them must must have any balls. Like they ballless, even the women. Anyway. Barbara Hill CC says, I had to find my inner voice. Felt like I was showing off. Dumb shit. Hmm. Yeah, like Carol said, if they say if you don't use it, you'll lose it. You're like, well, and you may be thinking to yourself, like, why? Why would I lose my voice? I ain't got to exercise my voice. Like, but yeah, in order to get to that point, because you can damage things. Not everything that you damage physically is a physical thing. Like you thinking like your voice, that's not a physical thing. How 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 to get fucked up? I don't know. Ask ask um the DOC. The DOC, if y'all don't know, is a rapper, you know, a, a West Coast rapper. He's actually from from um Houston, Texas. But but um was well, somewhere down in Texas, but he went to the West Coast and he used to write rhymes for for um for Dr. Dre and Easy E and and rappers out there but he had his own album in 1989 and you know that shit was all that you know the doc the doc and the doctor you know what i mean it's, dre is getting funky enough but he was he was in a bad car accident and fucked up his larynx and he can't he has none of the voice that he used to have so yes you can fuck up your voice I mean, what dumb luck, what fucking dumb luck to use the one thing that was going to that was going to make him rich and famous. Shout out 
Sure, husband says, I used to sing very well until my acid reflux came up my esophagus and burned my vo vocal cords. Damn. Had to learn sign language. When my voice came back, it wasn't the same. Oh, shit. Mm. Wow. Norso says, Bunny still has it, though. But the balls or the voice? Barbara Hill says, it got better after my divorce. Go figure. See, that was mental. That was mental. Yeah, stress stress related things can really fuck up things physically for you. It really can. Barbara Hill says, says yes, the DOC voice is crazy. Poor. Yo, that first album, I mean, shit was all of that. That album was, was a complete album beginning to end like the best thing on Roofless to me. But yeah. Yeah. It happens. It happens. It can happen to any any one of us. You lose that shit. Got good sense but losing your good senses. Got good sense but losing the good senses. I've always had this thing about getting older because that's not even what we're talking about today. I'm, of, course, of course, some of these things come as you um, as you age, but it's not about I don't I don't want to get into the reason that you can't do this or because you're losing this is because of age, because young people, you lose abilities, too. They do. So age comes at every age. You know, you may not be able to do the things that you could do when you were eight, when you're 16. You know, but so, but, but when you start to lose something that you really used to be in control of, it can, it can affect you. It can affect you mentally, emotionally. And sometimes it can demoralize you to the point where you don't want to try as much as you used to want to try. And that's what we're trying to avoid. We don't want to get into the point where we, we where we feel like, one thing was making us, and because we don't have that one thing anymore, now we are broken. Nah, nah, no, no, no. That's exactly where we don't want to go today. That's exactly where we do not want to go today. I don't want no part of that. So, yeah. And if, if, and if people really don't believe that, that your mental state can really fuck you up physically, Look at alopecia, since, since we were talking about hair before. Look at alopecia. Many, many people have reported um, a, a, having alopecia. Big 50 cent pieces of hair gone in they, in they scalp. As soon as they got their mind right, the hair grew back miraculously. No medicine, no medication, no, no, no treatment. Your heart, your head got better, your heart got better, your hair grew back. Go figure. Go figure. Make sure that y'all hit that like button. Make sure that y'all share the show. And make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Yeah. Got good sense, but losing your good senses. I, I, I said you got good sense, but losing your good senses. All right, man. Uh, Let me... Um, let's talk about uh, weight loss for a minute, y'all. Let's talk about weight loss for a minute. Some of y'all used to be thin. Some of y'all used to be muscular. Some of y'all used to be stacked. And y'all probably still are in the eyes of others. But in your own mind, you're like, Ugh. gravity starts to take over. Gravity starts to take over. I know when I was younger, I didn't I didn't even learn how to gain weight until I was 22 years old. The long summer of 40 ounces and, and chicken wings. That's all I ate that 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 whole summer. 40 ounces and chicken wings. But I noticed once it seemed like I broke my metabolism. It was never the same again after that. It was never the same. I didn't get fat and I actually took took the weight back off. But it was like once you show your metabolism. That all right, I'm gonna push you to the limit, and you're gonna 
and, and, and I'm going to make you gain weight. They'd be like, all right, see, I was holding you down before. Now look. Now look. How many of y'all can still run with y'all with your grandkids or, or your kids? Like, I can still run with, y- with Yanni, but I'm sure she can beat me now. But, you know, I took advantage of when she was little. I could still beat her. But I was never a real fast runner. I thought I was, but I guess in retrospect, I'm like, I wasn't never all that fast. I, I was faster when, when being chased. But if I got, you know, I, was, I wasn't all that fast. I really wasn't. <laughs> no, so it says learning when and when not to speak and act, acting upon decisions. Woo-wee. Woo. I'm not even sure if that's a census. That might just be a sense. Sure, husband says, my cousin could play the piano very well, but now carpal tunnel. Oh, shit. Oh, she got that carpal. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, instrument players, a lot of musicians get fucked up with carpal tunnel. <laughs> Typists used to get carpal tunnel all the time. Now typing is, is Remember when computers first came out It was a big thing Like if you want to learn computers You got to learn how to type first It made sense at the time Because just to make a circle you Used to have like 10 pages of Of, of, um, of programming you know, technology back then, just to make a circle, 10 pages of programming, like, yo, you had to enter all of that shit. It was crazy. Now it's like, we are so techno- tech- technologically advanced that we take it for granted. But yeah, not being able to play the piano or the horn or the or the or the guitar. That's your whole livelihood. Rest in peace to Eddie Van Halen. Barbara Hill C6 says, glad I had the good sense to get my education, which is where the photo came from. College mid 30s. So many are trying to go back now during the pandemic and economic crisis. Man, shout out to all of y'all who went to college as adults. Because I'd be goddamn. I don't know if I could pass a class these days. I might be smarter, but I'm definitely, I ain't more focused on no school. Like, I, there's no way it, that shit could be a... I was suck in a classroom right now. I would be good until it was test taking time. I'm like, I ain't got to take that shit. What you going to do if I don't take it? Nothing. You ain't my boss. I pay for this class. See, when, when, you, was, when you was in your uh, late teenage, your early 20s, you ain't believe that you were in control of your education. I'd be like, man, I ain't gotta take no, I ain't gotta take no test. Shit, gotta go work anyway. And I got kids. Fuck out of here. My life ain't my life ain't, ain't dependent upon these grades. Fuck you and, you and these grades. I paid for them anyway. Why can't I just buy an A? But yeah, shout out to anybody, anybody who has gone back to school, taken classes, and received an agree a degree as an adult. That's not no easy shit. It sounds easy. When people make it sound easy just because they're taking online classes. That shit ain't easy. Still got to do the work. Barbara Hill CC says, I've been lifting weights almost daily. My midsection is almost on point, and my girls ain't looking too bad either. Got to work these thighs. Have, have to be active working from home. And then David says, I can't run anywhere with these titties. Can't find a good sports bra. Man. Our ancestors had big titties back in Africa. I ain't hear them talking about no sports bra. 
You need a you need a a, um, a titty cloth. You know they had a loin cloth. You need a titty cloth. All you need is, is a breast cloth. How how did big titty um 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 African women how did they do it? How did they do it back in the day? You ain't gonna tell me they didn't run. They could run for miles with a you know balancing a, a, a fruit basket on their head. And you bitching about big titties and 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 and, and a. a and a and and a and a track, and a track and field track. I'll, I'll I'll hear none of it. I'll hear none of it. Emily Dunlap says, "Barbara, last time I had he healthy hair was 2016, when my accident happened. Trying to get it back to that, slowly getting there. That's what's up." <laughs> and then David says, "You remember complaining about about uh, you remember me complaining about your jumping jacks every Saturday." But that's just because y'all was complainers. They ain't had nothing to do with y'all titties. There's nowhere that says in the in the uh, in the exercise handbook that um, women, large breasted women, should not do jumping jacks. Matter of fact, it says in the marriage handbook that you should do them all the time. And I can show you. Mm -hmm. Monica Davis says, yeah, Annette, we need those jumping jacks and fire hydrants. Mm -hmm. Monica says, when I could run, I wasn't faster than my son, but he could, but I could run. You used to be doing the marathons. I used to be like, look at this chick doing marathons and shit. You're crazy. You're like, oh, you, you, you going to do the next one? Nope. I ain't going no marathon. I ain't running. I don't like to run. I know. I mean, I like to run. When you when you when you go for a jog, you start liking it. I don't want to like it. I'm like, nah, man, fuck this. You do some sprints. Get it over with. Sure, <laughs> that's says, yeah, duct tape. That's right, duct tape. That's that must have been how the ancient the ancients did it. Our ancient ancestors. The big titty ones. They use duct tape. Maybe. Monica Davis says, yeah, learning to type with Mavis. Yeah, I remember that shit. Wow. Yes, healthy lungs help too. Sure do. Barbara Hill C6 says, I was never a good runner. I'm awkward as fuck. Like my knees don't lift when running. I run like a sissy. <laughs> so it's why I always lost during cops and robbers and catch a girl get. Mm, mm, mm. And that David's talking about so I knew I shouldn't have said shit. You were inclined to say it because you're truthful. And it was only right that you said it. I just want you to think about your ancestors. That's all. When you go complaining about what, how bad your life is, I just want you to think about your great, 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 great grandmother and what she would have had to have done, Annette. That's all I'm asking you to do. Think about something bigger than yourself. Think about, think about your legacy. I, that's all I want you to do. Think about what happened and, and how those who paved the way for you Think about the sacrifices that they had to make. That's all I'm asking you to do. That's all. That's all. Barbara says, I love the jumping jacks. They were the greatest things. We should do some jumping jacks today. We should all do some jumping jacks today. Y'all want to do them right, right now? Let's do them now. No? I will right, we'll do them later. I'm going to put out a video today. Jumping jacks. We're going to do some jumping jacks today. Yeah. Putting out the jumping jacks video today. <laughs> That's right. Man. That's right. I'm glad you came to your senses. This is why this show is called Got Good Sense, but Losing Your Good Senses. <laughs> she said, my bad. I'll just shut the fuck up. That's right. 
You think about your great, 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 great grandmother and the sacrifices that she made. You know what I mean? She had to she had to do jumping jacks with a big titty self, probably just to you know keep Massa from destroying the family. And here you are, the nerve. Ugh. Ugh. Well, there's never too late to repent. And I encourage you to do so. You good for 50 um 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 jumping jacks later? All right, I'm I'm serious. We I'm gonna put out the video later or or go or or go live. We're gonna do the 50 50 jumping jacks later on. The beauty I could not see. Cherry just came through. A Cinderella day to day. Well, it's the woman day to day with fame. And she says, I'm good for five jumping jacks. Good mo- Five measly jump. No, you're going to do more than that. You're going to do more than that shit. <laughs> you going to do more than that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody getting away with no five jumping jacks. We're going to do jumping jacks later on. We gonna do jumping jacks later on. We got we we good. We good. We good. I'm glad y'all brought it up. That's what I'm talking about. My right body better fitness program, baby. We still here. You know our motto: We don't die, we thunder thigh. It's the new motto. Just came out. We don't die, we thunder thigh. All right. So. Running, shoot. Some of us can't even walk as good as we used to. You know, some of you know some some people who didn't have who didn't drive. They used to walk for miles. Beat the beat the bus to places that they were that they were going. And some people be like, "Man, I get winded after a block or two. I can't do it." And you know what that's about. Come on, man. And then David says, I'm at work. No jumping jacks for me. I mean, you're doing them anyway. Fuck that. You'd be working by yourself a lot. You could do them. You could do them. <laughs> sure. Husband says, oh, shit. Let me get the tape out. That's right. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Because here I come. <laughs> get ready. Because here I come. All right. Um, but yeah, like some people can't walk as, as, as well as they used to shout out to all my people who have gotten hip surgery out, out there. You know, that hip surgery shit is real. The damn hip surgery, hip surgery. No, I'm, them hip surgery people be fucked up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to all my hip surgery people, baby. <laughs> Shout out to my hip surgery people. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be all right, though. It's going to be all right. You know? It's going to be all right. And just because you... You get you had hip surgery or knee surgery. Shout out to all my knee surgery people. Shout out to all my Aquarians with y'all weak ass ankles falling all over the place. You know what I'm talking about, Carol. With y'all weak ass Aquarian, the weak ass ankles, baby. Yeah, you know say y'all one step away from. All right, listen, we're not picking on nobody today. Matter of fact, we're gonna strike that from the record. It's stricken. Strike it from the record. Yes, we are. Shout out to my hip surgery people. Shout out to my <laughs> shout out to my my knee surgery people. Shit is, shit is serious shit, man. Teeth, teeth. Some of y'all used to be able to eat eat ice cream with y'all two front teeth. Like used to be able to chew the ice cream, cold as shit. I mean, might not be able to do that now. Like, yo, now you got to keep it strictly on your tongue and you shifting it from side to side. You like, don't make sure it don't even touch your teeth. 
Make sure it don't even touch your teeth. Shout out to my people who who um shout out to the people who have lost their teeth and got a whole new set of choppers. Y'all know who y'all. There's a lot of people out there. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, a lot of people are very sensitive. Shout out to my people who won't who won't smile with their mouth open because they they ashamed of their teeth. You know that. Oops, oh, so, so, mm -mm. No teeth. The no tooth smiles. No tooth smiles. Get a new set of teeth. Get your confidence back. Fuck it. Get your confidence back. I might not be um uh, I might not be um down with uh with getting extra like don't count me out when it comes to like weight loss surgery, any kind of cosmetic surgery, but getting your teeth back in your mouth, I can't hate on that. You don't want to be a gummy bear. You a gummy boo. You a gummy boo. You're a gummy boo. Don't be a gummy boo. Don't be a gummy boo or a dummy boo. Monica Davis says, yo, our ancestors had strong legs with those dances. Them little African kids look like they, they still, you know what I mean? They must have strong feet, too. They be barefoot like fuck. I'd be like, yo. It must never rain in Africa, man. All that dirt look like it been dry for, for years. And they just be pop. Assuming that we're from Africa, because you know the jury is still out. I don't think we're all from Africa, but you know, for the sake of argument, all right. Emily says, "I got you on the other two, two um, twenty-one, about two or oh, two and a half. So you up to five teamwork. You know what? That's not going to make the dream. That no, no, Emily, that doesn't make the dream work. That does not make the dream work. At school and state college, we walked everywhere with yo." Didn't we, Monica? Yo, everywhere. We, we, and you know what? It's funny. You don't know how in shape you are walking all of those damn mountains and hills and, and shit up, up, up at State College. You don't realize how in great, how much in great shape you are until your ass come home for the summer. And then when you go back up there, you like, yo, I'm out of shape. Yeah. 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 Barbara Hill C.C. says, I have a gap and I love it. I smile all the time. You should. You should. A gap is nothing. Shoot. Not having teeth is the problem. Having teeth? I don't see that as being a problem. And then David says, not ashamed of my teeth. I look and feel goofy as hell when I smile with my teeth. No, you don't. Um, maybe you feel that way. You don't look, you know, there's nothing wrong. You have a pretty smile. Um, sure. Husband says some guys might like gummy for personal reasons. I know. Yeah. But I haven't, you know, you know, sure. It's funny. You should bring that up because I haven't heard any reports thus far about any gummy booze, you know, being able to do that any better than anybody else. Gummy boo. Because a, a woman who's a good women don't use their teeth anyway. It's all those bad women. It's those bad women. Those abusive women trying to. I promised myself I would not say anything ex sexually explicit on this one episode. I'm taking this one episode off. Y'all better enjoy it because tomorrow's Sunday. All right. Um, beauty, I cannot see Carrie. <laughs> Cherry says, yes, as Cheryl. Mm. Prove it. I ain't heard no look. All the dudes I've known, all the all the reported blowjobs. I ain't heard nothing about no no toothless women being able to do nothing. I 
I haven't heard anything about it. <laughs> Barbara Hill C.C. talking about something. I'm getting an ass tuck, psych. I do have one stubborn dimple on my left che cheek, cheek, TMI, but nobody will judge here. I'm about to start judging. Fuck is you talking about? I'm judging. <laughs> ah, Emily. <laughs> that David says, who's going to bring me lunch? He also says, school teacher from, I'm from Hookers on the Point. Omar, I said it for you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Hookers on the Point. Oh. Yo, what an HBO joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that show. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, well, I heard that. I didn't hear what the dude had to say about it. I hear what she had to say about it, but I ain't hear what the dude said. So unless we can get a taste test with these toothless boos. Toothless boo! I need to see you, oh, toothless boo. Toothless boo! We need to see you. The toothless boo! Nobody can do what you do. The toothless boo. You don't need no teeth to kick it. You don't need no teeth to kick it. If you ain't got no teeth or nowhere to stick it. I said, you don't need no teeth. All right, see, see, you see what y'all making me do? See what you're making me do? I was chilling and I'm, I'm going back. I'm going to exercise self-control. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <clears throat> Your husband says, I heard of a man leaving his woman because of skew, skew Kipper. What's Skew Kipper? Is that like Yom Kippur? Mm -hmm. Barbara Hill CC says, how about I worked up on Hunts Point Co-op Meat Market up in the Bronx and drove past those ladies of the night every day thinking that they were waiting for the bus. <laughs> Beauty, I cannot see cherries on some toothless boo. Let's let's do it. Let's let's do it. Oh, okay. Hold up. Let me make up a real song. Hold on. Oh, toothless boo. You know I love you. Toothless boo. You know oh, that I love you. Toothless boo. You know that I love you. Toothless boo, 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 I love you. Uh, 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 uh. Toothless boo, yeah, you know that I love you. Toothless boo, you know that I love you. A toothless boo, you know that I love you. I never place no woman with no tensions above you. A toothless boo, you know that I love you. A toothless boo, you know that I love me some you. Uh, that's my toothless boo, my toothless boo. Uh, my toothless boo, no dentures are above you. My toothless boo, you know that I'm always with you. No teeth, no, no problem. No teaching, no problem. And no tooth, no problem. No tooth, no problem. You got a problem, yo. You go, that's gonna solve them. Uh, you're my toothless boo. Uh, uh you're my toothless boo. Uh, you are my toothless boo. Yeah, toothless boo. That was toothless boo. Back by popular demand. You know what I mean? Calling the request line. You know what I mean? If you ain't got no teeth, I ain't got no beef. You ain't got no teeth, I ain't got no beef. You ain't got no teeth, you ain't got no beef. Yo, we gonna do this shit like Chris and me. You ain't got no teeth, I ain't got no beef. You my toothless boo nobody mess with you except me baby you know how we d baby all right 
And then Davey says, who's doing that with teeth anyway? The purpose is not to use your teeth. Yeah, tell a friend. 90 seconds. So as it says, I heard of a man leaving his girl because <laughs> she always bit his meat. But I never heard of someone leaving because she gummed too hard. Me either. Gummy booze have an advantage pleasure wise. Hey, all right. Well, my brother from another mother, Norris Hill, said it. He said it. It can't be wrong. At least not all the way. Can't be wrong, baby. Oh. 60 seconds. All right, y'all. We have some birthday shout outs to do. Some people were born on this glorious, glorious, glorious. October 17th, and they deserve to be acknowledged. So let's go about our business of acknowledging them and making them feel special because they are special because they are special because they are S P E C I A L. They are S P E C I A L. They are number one out the box. Karen Richburg, happy birthday to you, Karen, turning 54 years old today. And Judith Nolasco turning 28 years old today, and Anita Evans. Happy birthday to you, Miss Evans, and Emmanuel Carolyn Bicky, turning, turning, well, that's a girl, Emmanuel, turning 32 years Ten old today. Seconds. And also, also, David Austin the fourth, turning 45 years old today. He got, bow, 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 bow. You turning 45 today, you're right now. Do your damn, damn thing, brother. And Tanny Nickerson, happy birthday to you. And Stassi Lynn Bryant turning 55 years old today. And Cheryl C. Rome, happy birthday to you, Cheryl C. Rome. And my girl, from all the way back in the day, 1990, Yannick Campbell King. Yannick Campbell King turning 47 years old today. Happy birthday to you. And my girl, Ronika Lawton, happy birthday to you. And last but not least, straight from the PSU, Kappa Alpha Psi, my man, Mike Ravel, turning 50 years old today. He's a 1970 baby uh, with the blind and the cripple crazy. Yeah, my man, Mike Ravel. And he was like, Mike Ravel seemed like he was the richest, richest black dude at Penn State. <laughs> Yo, Monica, my life is like, I like to do pay. Anyway, I want to say happy birthday to all of you and anyone else out there who shares this birthday on this glorious Glorious, glorious, October 17th, anywhere out there in the world, worldwide, internationally, and universally. All of y'all go ahead and turn up, turn up, but don't turn up too loud, just turn up loud enough so everybody can hear you a rock out, rock on it, do the damn, the damn, the rock out, rock on it, do the, do the damn, rock out, rock on it, do the damn thing, you do your thing, y'all represent the queens and kings, you do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind. And any, any, to any, to uh, anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours. And remember, listen, man, you know, we ain't going to live forever, forever. And the things that we have been gifted to, they won't last forever either. But it doesn't mean that you go when it goes. We all go at the same time, but uh, just know that the gifts that you really have are still here, and it's going to be your ride. Yeah, you think it ain't going to be your ride, but it will. Uh. Yo, see y'all tomorrow, 11 o'clock a.m. for another, oh, wait, actually for the Urban Therapy with Sun Show. So I'm going to holler at y'all, your blog talk. We out of here. Ah! Thank you for using blog talk radio. Goodbye. And I get with y'all later. Peace.